Hello everyone, appreciate you tuning in to the Tallest in Life channel and I hope all is well in your part of the world as we continue to deal with this major public health challenge that's facing so very many. And again, because we're not doing a lot of riding and a lot of RVing right now, I thought I'd make good on a promise to several of our subscribers and do a video on changing the fluids on my 2018 Harley-Davidson Road Glide Ultra. Okay, the tools we're going to use for the day is a foot-pound torque wrench, an inch-pound torque wrench, a ratchet with a 5-8 socket, a 3-8 hex bit, a Torx 27 bit, an oil filter wrench with an extension, some paper towels, some funnels, and the owner's manual. Now, I do have a service manual and believe in that, but today I just wanted to demonstrate how everything we're going to do is actually located in the owner's manual. Now, I have warmed the bike up. In fact, I took it for a short ride to ensure that all the components were nice and warm. And we do have it up on a motorcycle lift, which is not required to perform this service. In fact, I perform this service on many bikes with it on the ground using only the bike's kickstand. This is my engine oil drain plug. It's on the left side of the bike facing forward. And this is my transmission fluid drain plug. It, you can see it faces straight down and of course this is my primary fluid drain plug. I'm going to take my ratchet with a 5.8 socket and remove all three drain plugs. Now I favor removing the engine oil drain plug with the oil field dipstick still inserted and that's because the system can't breathe with the uh, dipstick still screwed in and it will restrict the flow of this draining hot oil and it prevents it from you know initially rushing out now that the plug is removed i'll walk around to the right side of the bike and now I'll remove that dipstick cap so it can breathe watch how the oil drain flow will increase while i'm here i will go ahead and take my 3 8 hex and remove the transmission field dipstick because that drain, again, as you saw, faces straight down, and I'm not too worried about it rushing out. Not to mention, we're dealing with less than a quart of fluid inside the transmission. Now, with the same 5.8 socket, I'll remove the transmission plug and allow it to drain. And now I'll remove the primary drain plug. Now let's move to the oil filter. I like to use this little guy when removing my oil filter. In the past, I've used paper towels and old rags and plastic bags in an effort to reduce the mess. But this little thing seems to be my best solution so far. All I have to do is slide it under the filter until it touches the filter housing. And then I'll just add this little clear funnel 
that comes with it to help direct it into my little empty never dull can that I have here. Now I'll just take my oil filter wrench with my ratchet and a six inch extension and begin removing the oil filter. Now that I've got it loose, I'll just finish up by hand. And you can see right there how this little funnel does a pretty good job of catching most of the oil that's coming out of the filter. And right there is just one more look to show you how helpful this funnel is, but obviously not required. Now I'm going to take my new oil filter and I'm going to fill it about half full with new oil. Uh, some mechanics would tell you that it's unnecessary, yet some swear by it. So I always add a little bit. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Then I like to lubricate the rubber gasket, which aids in the removal process for the next service. If I don't do this, as the engine goes through its heat cycles, it can make it very difficult to remove uh, for the next service. Again, referring to my owner's manual, it says that when the rubber gasket touches the filter housing to turn it one half to three quarters of a turn and just to hand tighten, no filter wrench needed. Now it's touching the housing and I'll just uh, get a paper towel here to aid me in getting a good grip as I turn it one half to three quarters of a turn. And there it is. That's all we need for the filter. These are our three drain plugs that we removed. First thing I'm going to do is remove the old O-rings and then clean the old thread sealant off the threads. Also, I inspect the magnet that's at the end of each one of these for any metal shavings. My engine oil plug looks great. The transmission has very little debris, as does the primary plug. Sometimes you might have some very small pieces on the transmission and primary magnets. Uh, because there's so many metal parts that's moving around in those systems. But I shouldn't have a lot. Uh, if I ever do, it may be a sign of trouble. Now, let's remove the old O-ring. And usually I can do this with my finger. Uh, but if I can, I can just get a flathead screwdriver and help pull it off. And I'll just repeat the process with the two other plugs. Now I'm ready to reinstall all three drain plugs, each having a new O-ring and some thread sealant applied. First, I'll insert my engine oil drain plug. For the oil drain plug, I'll come to the other side of the bike just for more wrenching space. And I typically snug each one up with a ratchet. And then I'll finish up with a torque wrench. And now I'll reinstall the transmission drain plug. And again, using the ratchet to snug it up and finishing with the torque wrench. There's 19 foot pounds. And now the same process for the primary drain plug. Then finish it up with the torque wrench. Again, 19 foot-pounds is what I'm using. Now I'm going to remove the clutch inspection cover so I can refill the primary. For this, I'll use my ratchet with a T27 tool and simply remove the five screws. Now, after removing the screws, I want to clean them up, and then I want to add a little blue Loctite back to them. My owner's manual calls for 30 ounces of fluid to refill the primary, as well as a visual inspection to check to make sure that the fluid is at the bottom of the pressure plate. So now let's add the 30 ounces of fluid. Now 
Now we have all the fluid in. I'm going to confirm that the level is at the bottom of the pressure plate, and it is, so we're good. Now let's replace this old O-ring or seal on the clutch inspection cover, and I'm going to replace it with a new one. They're very easy to remove, and of course to reinstall the new one is very simple. Just push it into the groove. Just like that. Good to go. Time to reinstall the clutch inspection cover with its five screws and some blue Loctite. And we'll follow the star pattern that's in my owner's manual, which helps us from tweaking the uh, cover, the clutch cover. So I'm just going to hand tighten these first just to get them snug. And again, I'm having to use this paper towel because my hands have gotten quite slippery with these gloves. The star pattern in the book is one, two, three, four, and five in that sequence. And the torque specs are from 84 inch pounds to 108 inch pounds. So my torque wrench is set to 95 inch pounds, which typically does the trick for me. And one final torque check. Okay, now the primary is complete. Now let's walk around to the right side of the bike and add some engine oil and some transmission oil. My owner's manual says that the dry fuel for this bike is five quarts, but the wet fuel is four, and then you check to get it to appropriate level. Now with the four quarts added, I'll just do a cold check on the bike with it sitting upright. And on this model, you can check the bike upright or on its jiffy stand. And the dipstick will indicate where the level should be for whichever position you have it in. And this model also requires me to check the oil level with the dipstick screwed all the way in. And that looks good for now, but I'll do more checks after I run the bike for a little while. Now we'll simply add the 28 ounces of gear oil in the transmission, which should leave us with 4 ounces remaining in the bottle. Okay, that's 28 ounces in the transmission, so we're good to go there. The final thing we'll do is replace the O-ring on my transmission fill plug and dipstick, and that too is very simple. Just slide off the old one and reinsert the new one. And again, I probably didn't need to do this, but I just wanted to be sure. And then as I reinsert the dipstick, the manual calls for the torque between 25 and 75 inch pounds and I usually torque this very light around 25 inch pounds and all that's left to do now is run the bike some and confirm that all the fluid levels are good and we are done